Hello, beautiful souls. I'm back. I just wanted to say that. I really wanted to say it. Um, so I have been absent from all platforms for a little bit, uh, especially on YouTube, Patreon, all of those things, because I have been moving. So if you are new here, um, I've been moving, I've been packing up everything, I've been selling everything off, and I'm packing my life into a couple suitcases, and I am going to be hitting the road and going on a journey. And I have no idea where I'm going, so everybody keeps asking, where am I going? I don't really know. All I know is that I had to pack up my life, pack my life into a couple suitcases and I'll be hitting the road. So I will be doing the east coast of Australia for a little while and then I'll be going overseas. But for those of you who really want to go into that deeply and sort of get a bit, bit more of a life update, I've just done a video that I've created for Patreon. And it's also got a heart practice in it as well. It's free to everybody. Um, if you want to go have a look at that, by all means do. I'm in my temporary accommodation right now. So I'm house sitting here for about six weeks. So this is where I'll be working from. I normally do camera to cards when I do a reading, but today I wanted to do it face to camera just to kind of give you a bit of an update and just to kind of get some energy back into this space because I have been absent for a little while obviously during the move because it's been a very very long move it's been a very very intense process so I will be here for the next about six weeks and I'll be recording from different sort of places around here as well I'm really excited but we will be getting back into regular content both readings and also onto the meditation channel I was hoping to be able to do a meditation a day in May on the channel over the meditation channel but it's just not going to happen because I still have a few little things I've got to get sorted out ready for this like full adventure that I'm going on but I will get as much as I can done so we'll be getting meditations back up and running again as well we'll be getting readings back onto a regular sort of format in some capacity um, but I just wanted to come on today and just say hello getting back into the swing of things and really just sort of touching base but we're going to do a really simple kind of reading today and the reason I normally do cards to camera is so you have more time with the cards and you can see them and you don't have to look at me um, but today I just really wanted to do it this way we're going to be doing a goddess reading today but it's really about the way I was guided was to work with the goddesses but also just what does like the universe have in store for us what do we need to see today what's coming through here what do we need to know and just kind of reopen up this energy reopen up this portal and create sacred space again together so I'm really really excited for it so let's get started into our little mini reading so we're not going to have a long reading today we're not going to sort of go too deep into it because I just wanted to like touch base get back into the swing of things and uh and get some set some recordings done get some videos done for you guys so let's have a look at which goddess wants to come through as our like first goddess we call this the anchoring goddess so for those of you who've never watched one of my goddess readings you might be new to the channel the goddess readings what we normally do is we have one goddess who's kind of our our lead and then we have like two supporting goddesses that come through to kind of support the reading support the energy um but i really always like to have that one main goddess like what do we need to see with this particular energy the other reason i normally do camera to cards versus face to camera like this with readings is because I'm very animated when I'm doing readings and uh, you don't get to see that because I'm, I'm always behind the camera and you see a very, very, you know, very uh, easeful kind of journey. But I'm very, very animated when I do my readings and you just guys, you just don't get to see it. So um, let's just see what wants to unfold here today. The other thing I will always say as well is I never edit, edit my videos so if we make a mistake if something happens it is what it is and also because you will see me doing it this way as well is that I only take drop cards if there's one if there's more than one I don't take them because it's just a bad shuffle for me and if I'm having a conversation like this then I might just have a bad shuffle but let's get our opening goddess what do we need to see to support the collective at the moment because it is an intense energy and if you really want to have a look at that as well, we did go through, um, I went through a bit of an energy update, a little bit to do with that in our Patreon video. It's, as I said, it's free to everybody, that one. Um, and it really, we're going to a specific energy, uh, but I will be getting into more energetic updates over the next month because we do have an intense six months coming up. So we'll get into that, stuck into that. But let's have a look at our first goddess here. We have is the beautiful Persephone. So... Persephone is one of my favorite goddesses to work with. I've been working with her for many, many years. And we see Persephone as both the maiden and the queen. And for me, what I'm hearing with this is we have a choice. We can stay in our maiden energy, right? It doesn't matter how old you are, right? Age is not a, is not is like a non-issue. It's not a thing. Age is not the problem. 
The maiden energy is a choice. We can either be in the maiden energy where we're not taking control of our life or we can choose to step into the queen energy where we're sovereign and we're taking control and we're taking charge and there's sort of what i'm hearing with that is that like there's there's no one that can fuck with that energy i like to say that it's unfuckwithable when you when you really send your sovereignty and you work at that level of self it's like you become unfuckwithable right and that's what persephone personifies is that she's like the, the whole story of Persephone is she gets kidnapped or there's multiple stories but one of the stories is that she gets kidnapped by and taken down to the underworld by Hades and um you know uh, she brings it's it's a whole long story but she basically is able to go back to earth to bring spring back to earth and then gets taken back down to the underworld six months of the year so there's like a six month portal and I don't know why I'm going into that, but I am. But the thing I want to say is when she's in the underworld, she's like, well, I'm here. I may as well be fucking queen, right? If I'm going to be here, I may as well own it. And that's what this is. Even in our darkest times, even in our most challenging seasons, even in those, the face of absolute adversity, we can become a sovereign self. We can step into our queen energy. We do not have to stay in maiden, right? People pleasing, giving our energy away, all that kind of stuff. All that stuff is just fucking toxic bullshit now. We can step into queen or king or sovereign, whatever label you want to choose. I don't give a shit what label it is, right? Just choose the label that aligns for you. You guys, if, you, if and if you're new here, I channel with energy. It's got nothing to do with gender. So always remembering that, but feeling into your sovereign self, your most sovereign being. Everything else other than that is just toxic, right? And this here literally says toxic bonds detangle choice point. So you have a choice. You can stay in your maiden, your page energy, or you can choose to rise into your sovereign self. You have a choice. No one is saying you can't be sovereign except for you and your wounds and your fears and your mind, your beliefs, right? No one else is saying anything other than you. You can't be queen. Or king or sovereign and it is a choice that we have to make and if you're still choosing to play the maiden it's a choice and so if you want to step into your ultimate soul's expression you need to become the queen or king or sovereign energy of your own life right so persephone is our anchoring energy so if that's all you need that's all you need what do you need to do to become your most sovereign self go out there and do it do the work do the inner work, right? The amount of times that I hear people be like, oh, I've done a meditation, I've done my work, I'm all healed. And I'm just like, yeah, healing's a lifelong thing, right? Shadow work is not a one and done thing. However, there are times when I meet people and we might have a session, we might have a session just like once a month or whatever it might be. And the amount of work they're willing to do in that time blows my mind right? Sometimes people come back and they've done no work and it's like, why has nothing changed in my life? Well, because you haven't done the inner work. And other times I'm just absolutely blown away by how much inner work people do. And so we have a choice. We always have a choice. And if you go and watch the video that I've, I've posted up onto Patreon, that has a little bit more depth of like my personal journey over the last few weeks, few months to pack and move and shift and sell and give away everything that I have that's basically what I did was was pretty much packed up my entire life um and sold it all off or gave it all away and it was such a crazy journey but it was a choice for me that I needed to do right and even though it was challenging even though you know I was met with adversity with lots of different things we have a choice to either play play the hand that people expect us to play or the play of the hand that we know is our destined path. And we are the ones that are in control of that. So what does that look like for you? Let's get a couple more cards here. What else do we need to see? Let's get two more goddesses. Who is supporting Persephone right now? Persephone. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so excited for this energy. It's so beautiful. Okay, this one it kind of feels like she wanted to come out as well. Okay, so the next goddess we have is one of my all-time favorite goddesses, 
if not my all-time favorite goddess. It's my main goddess that I work with and she's tattooed on my arm for that reason and it is the goddess Lilith. <sighs> Liberation Lilith, like we want to be liberated. We want freedom. We want ultimate freedom. We don't want to be playing this bullshit energy anymore. We want this ultimate freedom energy. And this says liberation, freedom, and self-respect. Like what more could you want to be sovereign than working with Lilith? That's why she's tattooed on my arm. The other reason I'm not doing a camera to cards video today is because one, I have no fingernails left. Like I have literally butchered my fingernails and I am bruised all over. My arms everywhere is bruised. And I have a massive bruise on my Lilith tattoo. Like it is massive from doing all this moving. It's crazy and yeah, if you saw my arms like down as I was doing camera to cards, you'd be like, whoa, because my arms, my legs, everything are just bruised. I'm bruised from head to toe <laughs> just from shifting so much stuff. Um, but Lilith to me is the personification again. Persephone personifies. The personification feels like the word of the day. But Lilith is the personification of freedom and liberation and revolutionary energy. It's like we will not settle for less than we deserve we will not settle for this shitty kind of energy that we may have been existing in we want more and what are you willing to do to claim it you got to get off the you got to get off the sidelines you've got to get off the fence and claim the life that you desire that is what is speaking to us right now right and she has her beautiful you know wolf energy with her but the way i'm also seeing this even though Yes, they're like wolf energy. Some people would say dog energy, but wolf energy that's coming through there. As I'm looking at it, because of the way I can see, and my vision isn't great um, when I'm looking at distant stuff. So for me, looking at that, I'm actually seeing black cats, like really big black cats, like the panther, all right? I have a black jaguar tattooed on my back, back, and it's like to me, so any panther, any big black cat is a panther, but also we have the black jaguar, so which is classified as well as a panther. So any big black cat is a panther. That's how I'm seeing that. And so if you want to work with panther medicine as well, it's such a potent medicine you can work with. And really feeling into the magic, the medicine that is in the unfolding, in the underworld, in the underground kind of energy within us, like in that deep subconscious. That's how I'm really seeing that. So Lilith as a liberator, like breaking free of chains, breaking free of all this, this energetic restriction that you may have as well. So what do you need to do to liberate yourself? Feel into that and do it right? Liberate yourself from the shackles that you have perpetuated or created around you. That is Lilith's message. And then we have Saraswati and we, it says here, creativity, inspiration, and music. I always see Saraswati as this beautiful kind of guide into our more creative soul self, right? It feel, she always feels very, um, almost as if she's more of that muse energy and it's like very playful and bringing in this beautiful the way I'm seeing it is just like these beautiful like rainbow colors like streaming through into your into your field through your intuition through whatever cosmic portal you want to kind of connect to whatever label that is but I'm just seeing here this this beautiful magic starting to weave in your life but you need to be open to it so when creativity knocks you need to answer otherwise it's going to go on to someone else it's the big magic theory right it's the big magic the muse energy whatever it is but I'm just seeing here it's like allow yourself to play with different ideas allow yourself to play with different versions of you allow yourself to play I was speaking to the a beautiful um, person yesterday who um, bought some of my furniture she she came to pick up some of my, some of the furniture that I was selling and we had the most beautiful conversation and just such a beautiful, beautiful soul. And we were talking about music because we both have a history and past of music and all of this kind of stuff. And we we're talking about, you know, the muse and creation and, and all of these things. There was a point to that story. There was a point. I'm getting so like, it's like I'm, I'm almost there, but then I'm losing it today. It's really, really interesting. Um, where was I going with that? This creation energy. And how it moves through us. But we have to grab it. I can't remember what I was going to say with that. But that's what that is, right? We're talking about big magic. And it's like when we're open to that energy, it's amazing how much our life shifts. But it really is, because I'm thinking about this with, with Persephone and with Lilith, liberation, self, all those things. Ugh. 
whatever that wherever I was going to take that conversation but it was about this conversation I was having with this beautiful person yesterday and it really is that we have to take control of our life we have to choose the life that is best for us right we have to allow our inspiration to move us and that's really what Saraswati comes through to guide us into so there are three goddesses and as I said, I'm not going to keep this reading too long today. Having a bit of a play today, it just feels like, let's just be a little, a little playful and have some fun. And I will get back into more of the series readings later. Like we'll do some shadow work readings coming up really soon. I really want to dive deep into some shadow work readings. I really want to go deep into some other energies as well. There's a lot of things that have been channeling through, but I just have not had the capacity to record them or download them. Um, and I've also needed a space to, to be able to sit in front of and record as well. And I haven't had that for a couple of weeks. So let's have a look at some pairing messages. I just feel this like detangling from this past energy that has kept you stuck and small that's really what this feels like so what does that look like in theory what does that look like what can we see here to support us and we are going to get three of these oh okay it's really interesting as well i'm also hearing um Oh, the, th the, the other card that came through that was like a little bit of a card that was like, I want to come out, but I it wasn't part of our three goddesses was Baba Yaga. I do have a meditation with Baba Yaga on the channel. She's such an incredible goddess to work with. People question if she's a goddess or not. And until you work with her, you won't know, right? There's a lot of myth. There's a lot of theory. There's a lot of different stories about Baba Yaga. I personally work with her as a goddess frequency. She is an aspect of the, of the divine feminine, right? So yes, she has a lot of history and stories about her, but she has so many gifts and so much sacredness in this. And this says wisdom, apothecary and healer. So if you have been thinking that your soul's journey is somehow connected to being a healer, an intuitive, an energy worker, a guide, anything like that, herbal medicine, right, getting to that apothecary stuff, my favorite, like it's my favorite stuff. If, if you have any sort of inkling in your soul that that is where you need to be going, follow that thread follow that energy right so this kind of I put it to the side because it wasn't part of the main three but it definitely wanted to be pulled out so some people need to hear this but not everybody needs to hear this but if you feel that this is partly your mission part of your purpose take action I was, I was gonna say wake the fuck up and take action but I was like let's soften that no we're not softening it wake the fuck up and take action let's get going Right, we need healers, we need apothecaries, we need this medicine back in the world because our world is going to be changing a lot and we need to bring our magic into it as much as possible. So Baba Yaga coming through there. To me, I always see her as this beautiful sacred crone energy of deep, deep wisdom and sitting in this beautiful space. So take that as you need it and leave it if you don't. The, th the three tarot that came out with this, though, we have the four of wands. And the four of wands is celebration. So the thing that I'm hearing with this, though, is <laughs> it's going to be really interesting how this comes out, is that celebration will come for those who put the work in. You can't like don't you can't have a pre-celebration, right? You have to actually do the work to become the version of you to celebrate versus celebrating if like we should celebrate the small things, but celebrate it equal and opposite energy exchange of the celebration, right? So the way I've always put that is when people say do um their, their soul purpose and they're stepping into soul purpose and I do a rewards method. It's like when you do this, you get a reward, right? So if you send an email, the reward can't be a trip to Paris. It has to be equal energetic thing, right? If it's been a challenge for you and it's like, I need to get this one little thing done and you incentivize yourself, right? And you, and you give yourself the carrot, not the stick, right? You're incentivizing yourself. We're more likely to do it. But you can't go into pre-celebration if you've got no intention of doing the work, right? That's how I'm seeing this. Celebration will come for those who are willing to invest their time and energy into what it is they're wanting to create within themselves. So it really, it's like, it's, uh, oh, what's the, what's the phrasing for it? Um, there's a phrase that's really, it's on the tip of my tongue and I cannot, I cannot for the life of me think of it, but it really does feel like, you know, 
I did a meditation. I'm going to celebrate by buying myself this thing. No, no, no. That's not an equal exchange. That's not an equal celebratory thing. Yes, we should celebrate the small things, but we celebrate it with a small win. Like we celebrate it with the equal measure, right? But celebrate your journey along the way. What I'm hearing for some is that the life you've been cre like really craving and you've been trying to manifest or that you've been desiring to step into will be coming about very soon if you're willing to keep moving forward, right? You've, you've got to keep moving forward. And the next two cards are, we have the emperor, sovereign, right? Becoming the most sovereign version of self, becoming the most grounded sovereign version of self, right? You know who you are, you are unfuckwithable, and you know how to navigate this journey, and then we have the chariot, which is like this fast movement. But what I'm feeling with this is that we can take our journey slowly if we need to. But when spirit says move, like move. When spirit says move, we move. When you are guided to do something, when you are guided to take action, when you are guided to do something that feels out of your comfort zone, are you willing to do it? Or are you going to sink back into that maiden energy and be like, oh, wait another day? right? We have to take action if we want to become sovereign. We have to take action if we want to heal. We have to take action if we want to live the life that we desire, that we are craving, that our soul is wanting us to fulfill. We have to do the work for that, right? So that's what these cards are showing us. So take what you need, leave what you don't. As always, not every reading is for everybody. And this one today as well was just a little bit of a play. Like, let's just get a little bit of this energy back up. Let's get a little bit of fun and playfulness into this space and see how you feel in that. But what does your sovereign self want you to do? If you can tune in, ask your sovereign self, have a conversation with your most sovereign version of you, right? In your future self, the most sovereign version of you, have a conversation and ask, what do you need me to do? To step into that version of me? What do I need to do to liberate myself from all of this shit that I'm still entangled in? What do I need to do to become so empowered that nobody can fuck with me again? Right? Those are the questions to be asking yourself. So start taking action. And as I always say, a reading will not change your life unless you're willing to do the work that you need to do that the reading shows you. Right? But a reading can change your life if you're willing to take the action steps, whatever those action steps are for you, because for everybody, it's going to be different, right? So what does that look like? What does that feel like? How can you explore it more? So I'm going to leave it there, beautiful souls. I am so excited to be back. I will be doing more readings, obviously moving forward. And if you have any requests for special readings, for specific sort of themes, anything like that, let me know. The other thing that I will say as well is I've got six weeks in this space um, and I have all of my decks still with me. And between now and then, I've got to cull my collection. I will be storing a lot of my decks here. I'm still selling some, but I'm storing a lot because I can't get rid of some. Um, so I will be storing some of them. But in the next six weeks, I have to cull my collection down to about 20 decks that I'm taking with me on the road. So we're going to be having a lot of fun playing with a lot of decks, like lots and lots of random decks. I'm just, I'm going to be pulling pretty much, I'm going to try and work with as many decks as I possibly can out of my collection to feel into it, to see, do I want to take that with me? Is it something that I can work with, with doing the YouTube readings? Is it something that I journey with in our Patreon space? I have obviously the ones that are my personal one, like the Crow Tarot will be coming with me because it's my personal, it's the one that I work with every single day myself. So of course the Crow Tarot is coming with me. Um, of course Rumi is coming with me because I can't live without my Rumi Oracle. But other than that, I need to kind of cull this down. So we're going to be having a lot of fun exploring different themes, different sort of styles of reading, different different ways of reading as well so I can work with a lot of different decks so you will see some pretty random decks popping up on the channel over the next six weeks just to get a bit of a feel and if there's a deck that you love in that or if there's an energy that you love in that or if there's a style of reading that you'd like to see or a theme or something like that let me know in the comments below because for the next six weeks I want to have a lot of fun I want to just tap into pure joy I want to bring in as much excitement and as much fun and as much liberation into 
into this space as I possibly can for us to all untangle ourselves from any of the bonds that are keeping us hooked into the past, right? So let's have some fun with this. Let's get sort of explorative in it. And um, yeah, but if you do have any sort of specific styles or themes that you want to look at, um, pop them in the comments below because I will be reading the comments and I'll, I'll take that anything on board. So soul purpose, shadow work, relationships. Um, what else we got? Healing. Um, I don't even know what I've said. <laughs> it's like my brain is a sieve right now. <laughs> I've had so much to think about over the past few weeks that my brain is just mush. So if there's anything though, any theme, any style, any kind of reading that you really want to tap into, let me know and we will explore it if we can. Um, but sending you all so much love, beautiful souls, and I'll connect to you all again very, very soon. Much love.